Hey guys, Aaron Farmer here with MySugarFreeJourney.com. Yesterday was day five of our 28 day challenge and so I'm gonna recap the things that we talked about. The big question that we're gonna answer today is why do we eat so much crappy food? So as a nation we are addicted to fast food and uh, every day McDonald's feeds over 47 million people. That's a whole lot of people. And this is no longer a uniquely American phenomenon either with fast food reaching global sales in the multiple billions of dollars. But why would somebody in Italy order Domino's pizza when they can get much better Italian food there in Italy? Or why would somebody in Mexico eat at Taco Bell when they could get street tacos uh, for that are taste better and probably a little cheaper? Uh, what what is happening there? And to understand what's happening, you need to understand what is driving the need to eat. And to do that, we need to look at hormones again. Um, so we are a pleasure-driven people. Most of the things we do are driven by the reward center of the brain. So there are two areas of the brain that were that control reward. There's the ventral tegmental area, we're going to call that the VTA, and there's the nucleus accumbens, and I might be pronouncing these wrong, but that's the NA. Um, so pleasure happens when the VTA tells the NA to release dopamine, and the NA releases dopamine, and then that dopamine is then absorbed by the D2 receptors on the NA. When that happens, you experience pleasure. So uh, that's if you've ever enjoyed something, if you've ever eaten a good meal, or uh, you know anything else that you found enjoyable, the reason you found it enjoyable was dopamine was released, and you you enjoyed that dopamine. So when you're eating tasty food, <clears throat> such as food that's high in fat, salt, and sugar, you get that dopamine hit, and um, and uh, and you like what you've done. So if your hormones are all working properly, you will eat until you're satisfied and quit before you overeat. But for many of us, these hormonal pathways are broken, which leads to overeating. If you get constant dopamine hits from what you're doing, you will wear out the dopamine receptors, requiring greater and greater amounts of dopamine for the same amount of pleasure. This is the same principle that leads drug addicts to take larger and larger doses of their drug in, uh, in order to get the same high. And we're doing the same thing with our food. We need larger and larger hits <coughs> of salt, fat, and sugar uh, to get those same feelings of pleasure, and mostly sugar. Um, well, guess who always puts a ton of salt, fat, and sugar in their foods? That's right, it's the fast food industry. So when things are working smoothly, and everything's not your metabolism isn't broken, you eat good food, uh, <clears throat> your body releases dopamine, so you enjoy it. When your body senses you've had enough to eat, leptin is released, which triggers the VTA to stop releasing dopamine, so your appetite is suppressed and you feel full. <clears throat> but if you are leptin resistant, the appetite isn't suppressed and you keep eating. And as we discussed uh, yesterday, obesity at its core is just leptin resistance. So insulin also clears away dopamine from the cells. But what if you're both, both leptin and insulin resistant? Now you have increased dopamine telling you how awesome it will be to eat junk food. And you have the high insulin levels rolling around in your bloodstream telling you that you're starving. So if you've got both these things screaming at you, the dopamine is screaming at you, it tastes so good to eat that fast food, and your insulin is telling you that you're starving, you need to eat right now, what chances does your willpower have against that? Your willpower doesn't stand any chance in the world. So when everything is working well, let's say you go to the mall and you smell the Cinnabon. Um, so <clears throat> the, you smell the Cinnabon, it releases a little dopamine to increase desire, and your body secretes ghrelin, the hormone that gives you a feeling of hunger. So now you've walked in the mall, you've smelled something nice, dopamine's telling you it would be nice to go eat that, ghrelin is making you hungry, and so you walk over to the Cinnabon. You eat the Cinnabon. More dopamine, <clears throat> sorry, more dopamine is released because it tastes awesome. Uh, then insulin levels rise, clearing out the dopamine so it stops tasting quite as good. That's why food tastes better when you're hungry. <clears throat> then leptin is released and you're full. But if you're leptin and insulin resistant, and again, if you are obese, you are most certainly leptin and insulin resistant, uh, that's not where the story ends. The dopamine isn't cleared out so that the, so the Cinnabon tastes awesome for uh, far more bites than it should. And the increased insulin tells your body that you should be hungry for far longer than you should. And at the end of the day, you're a little fatter than when you started. So the cycle is no, drink, no different for food than it is for drugs or alcohol. Once you need more and more dopamine for the same high uh, from food you used to get, you're addicted. So according to the American Psychological Association, you are addicted to something if you show three of the following seven symptoms. So we'll go through them in order. Number one, tolerance. Um, you need more food for the same pleasurable effect. 
why do you supersize every meal when you don't need to supersize the meal? Uh, you know, a, a smaller meal is probably just as much food to get you full up, but yet you super, supersize it. Why do you order the 20 piece nugget when the 10 piece nugget will do? It's because you've uh, increased your tolerance to, to uh, the effects of the salt, salt, fat, and sugar. Number two, withdrawal. It could be physical symptoms like tremors or psychological ones like depression or anxiety if you don't get the food that you crave. Um, I remember when I tried to quit drinking sodas, uh, I was totally obsessed with drinking Coke until I just finally gave in and have, had one. You know, I'd go two, three, two, three weeks and be strong and then finally I was just like, I gotta have a Coke. Um, have you ever stopped trying to eat something like sugar or fast food only to become obsessed with it? Uh, if so, you, you may be going through withdrawal. Number three, binging. <clears throat> this includes eating until uncomfortable, eating when not hungry, eating when alone due to shame uh, or feeling disgusted, depressed, ashamed, or even panicked after overeating. Have you ever sit, sat in the dark and ate a whole pint of Ben and Jerry's ice cream? That's binging. Number four, desire or attempts to quit. So the dieting industry is a $160 billion a year industry. It's not that the overweight aren't trying to lose weight. That's almost all that they're doing. Uh, they just don't know how to do it and are fighting against their own physiology when it comes to try to stop overeating. Have you ever stopped eating something for a few weeks or even a few months and then go right back to what you were doing, uh, to what you were avoiding until all the weight came back? Well, that's, that's that same cycle of yo-yo dieting that so many of us get caught up on. Uh, number five is craving or seeking. So have you ever left the house in the middle of the night because you just had to have a dessert? Uh, do you feel like you can't start your day until you get a sugary drink from Starbucks? Uh, th this is the behavior of an addict seeking their drug. Number six, interference with life. Has your addiction compromised your life? Have you ever had to buy two airline tickets because you couldn't fit into one seat? Uh, have you ever lost a job because you were too overweight to perform it? Or maybe you never got hired because you were too fat? You ever been un unable to play with your kids or your grandkids? Um, because you just get uh, you know out of breath too easily, or you uh, you know, are there things that you want to do but you know you'd never do it because you're just out of shape? That's your addiction interfering with your life. And number seven, use <clears throat> use despite negative consequences. You know that what you're doing uh, is what you're eating is shortening your life, shortening your lifespan and causing you harm. Yet you still continue to eat. So uh, number one through seven. Tolerance, withdrawal, binging, desire or attempts to quit, craving or seeking, uh, interference with life, and use despite negative consequences. If you show any three of those seven, uh, the seven symptoms, uh, according to the, uh, what was it called? The American Psychological Association, you, uh, you are addicted to whatever it is that you're going through those symptoms with. So are you addicted to food? Well, just think about your life and think about those seven things, and if you are, uh, if you show any three of those seven symptoms, <clears throat> there's a good chance that you are. Uh, however, it, there's good news. It can be fixed, and that's what we're going to continue to talk about as we as we go through this uh, as we go through this uh, this 28 day challenge. So again, I just want to reiterate, I am not a doctor. I'm just a guy that's lost some weight by doing this, and uh, so I'm trying to help anyone. You should not always listen to your doctor's advice and do everything your doctor says. Obviously, I, I want to continue to say that. However, I can tell you just from personal experience, that this is. This is the stuff that helped me understand what my body was going through, and it was the stuff that helped me finally break my addiction to sugar and to carbs and to, uh, to lose weight, which is, uh, which is a good thing. So I appreciate it. We'll talk to you tomorrow. Bye-bye.